Hello everybody, this is Fiscal Rascal. I'm back with another set of videos here. This one is going to show an end-to-end -end run of how to create a two-part mold system using the very clever Z-Butt system. I really like this one a lot. I've since moved on from the synth system to this because number one, it's 3D printable and it's accessible to everybody that way. So you can get the parts a lot cheaper and there's a lot of flexibility involved with it as well. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right into it. The first part is the master sculpting base. And with this one here, uh, the sculpting base, you can put your clay right on there to build up onto there to make something. So for example, uh, right here, I've made one where I've been working on parts for Wendigo or Wendigo, depending on how you like to pronounce it. And I've got some of these all ready to go right here. I'm gonna show you those in a moment, but you would just sculpt on the first part here. And then you also need to have something for the second part uh, the the cavity mold is what we'll call this part. And this has the sprues on there. So this is how the resin is going to come up out of those holes out of the top and let out all those imperfections. And let's say if you already have uh, either a blank or you already have a master or something else that you just want to convert over to the system, you can do that too, just by connecting this one here. So there's a little connector on there. So you just click that one right in like so. And then that way, when you're pouring your silicone over the top, you'll be able to make the mold that way. And then for those that are not familiar with the two-part mold system, this is how it's set up. So you have uh, those holes in there, which hopefully you'll be able to see in there. And so this would go on top of there, just like a cap. And this is keyed in, so there's a round part right there. And there's a round part right there. You line those up, and you want to make sure that that's nice and tight in there, which it is, because all of these are compatible with each other. And they're keyed in nicely for it, so there's no extra wiggle or play in there, so it's not going to create a vacuum effect. And then, uh, like all the little imperfections come out into those sprues, you snip those out, and then you have your cap. So, with that in mind, uh, we can start talking a little bit about how this system connects, and you, if you want to make a mold with it too. So, we've got two different options for this. You can print out something called a no hassle base. I really like these a lot because uh, for those of you that have used Lego molds in the past for that, it's still fine to do something like that. You just put these in there. These are sized, so it's four by four. So everybody has Legos around where you can order either the generic ones or if you have other sources, you can use those too. And then you can build up based off of that. But this will create a lot of little flashing everywhere with it. And the other way that you can do this is with the no hassle base, which is what I've moved on to, where you don't have all the flashing except for a couple sides. And these are slotted so you can just slide them right in like so. And then after you connect both sides, it becomes airtight. It's going to look like it's not fully in there, but on the inside where it counts, it will be. So it's a really nice system for that because then once you're ready to pull that out, just disconnect it. I'm going to show you in a future video how that works, but it's really quite clever. All right, uh, I think that's about it for the Z-Butt system. Now we can talk about mixing the silicone here. So I'm going to move these out of the way and show you how that works. I've moved on from using the uh, Umu 30 to Moldstar 30. This Moldstar 30 is great because it's a lot firmer than Umu, and that means that it's going to have a longer life to it, and uh, there's less of a chance of having that vacuum effect where you start to push down on your molds, and then as soon as it comes up again, it actually forms a little vacuum and bubbles will appear inside. So I, I like Moldstar 30 for that. Uh, you can also use 20T, which is uh, Moldstar 20T, which is similar to, but uh, it looks clear for that. It's a little bit squishier with it, so uh, I'm not sure I would recommend that one for the cavity molds, so the top of the two-part mold, but for everything else, it's, it's pretty great. And in this example here, I'm going to be using the Moldstar 30. And uh, the other things that I want to show you are that I've got uh, the stir sticks that I have here. I'll go anywhere from one to three of those. I have one measuring cup now. I've been able to remove the, uh, all the other options in there because we want to re reduce waste as much as we can. So for this, it's clear and it's marked in there so I can see exactly how far up it's going. And what I do each time is I'll mix in here with these and then as soon as it cures, you can pull it out and then reuse the same one again. This has been used over 20 times. You might be able to see in there that there's a bunch of scrape marks and everything in there because this has seen so much use. So you can find some of these like a 20 pack is a lifetime supply of them. So it's really nice to cut down and waste that way. The reason why I use three of these sticks here is because if you have the 
the mold star 30 and if it's been sitting around for a little while you want to stir it up just to make sure that uh, it's got everything mixed inside it also recommends and says stir well before using right on top so we want to follow that uh, for mold star 30 it also says that uh, this is safe to use uh, it doesn't contain any does not contain any chemicals and so uh, the proposition 65 for California is one of them, but it says no hazardous ingredients, so you don't have to wear a mask, but I like to do that anyway with all the parts. Uh, same thing with these gloves here, because I think safety is really important. All right, uh, the last thing that I want to mention is uh, that I do like writing the numbers on there. So for example, here I'll write the dates. So uh, this was open March 8th. So it's been a little while. This is towards the tail end of when I like to use this because it's, it's May now. So uh, we're, we're getting pretty close to that because before long, it's going to start curing in there. But I can open this up. What I'll do is I'll give it a good stir. The other nice thing about this is I'll be able to tell just based off of feel if it's starting to gum up in there, which it feels like it's not. So it seems to be okay for this one here. But I'll, I'll stir it for about 10 seconds or so. And then once that's done, we can set that up for the other part here. This is also somewhat pricey. It's around $30 for uh, these containers of that. So I, I like to use another stir stick here. And so I'll kind of scrape that off of there to get most of it back into there. And then from that, I, I don't want any kind of contaminations going on from each of those. So you can see in my workspace and everyone is free to use whatever workspace ideas they like. But in my case here, I like to have one where I have some paper towels and right below there, there's some parchment paper. And then I have some paper towels that are readily accessible right there that I can just pick up and grab. All right, so I'm going to set that one aside because I'm going to use the other side of that. This one's good to go. I'm going to do the same thing with this part here. While this is going, and also to save time, I'm going to start the air compressor because the idea here is if you're going to be making any kind of caps under pressure, you want to make sure that it's the same PSI for the silicone as it is for the resin. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of forming warts on top of your mold. So uh, we definitely don't want to have all those bumps on there. So just as a rule of thumb, like if you go with 40 PSI or 50 PSI or whatever you decide, then stick with that for everything. I always do 50 for mine, so it's easy to remember, but that's totally up to you. All right, I'm going to turn this on and go back to mixing the part A here. So since the last video, I've got a much quieter version of that air compressor. You can still hear me, even though that's going. If you look or listen through the door, you wouldn't be able to hear anything at all. So it's really nice. Okay, so using my other clean one here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix and I'm feeling for any chunks or anything else in there. And part A is the one that has a more rubbery part to it. Part B is usually the catalyst. So let's see what happens with this. Yeah. Now the air compressor is going to turn off automatically, just like it did right there, once it's at full pressure. And then as soon as you plug it into your pressure pot, if it needs more air pressure, then it'll kick back on again. So it's really nice for that. Okay, so it's been approximately 10 seconds. And then now I'm going to do the exact same thing here where I'm going to look for the blue side. So I'm using the other side of this to scrape off. So I make sure I don't contaminate those together and pouring that in here. Okay. And then now I can throw away the one piece and I'm going to wipe off on the other side here. And so now I've got both sides of that ready to go. And now the way that I like to do this, so I always remember, is I always do part B first because that's the catalyst on there and I want the one that's going to turn into the silicone to be on top so then I do part A on top of that and then with the mixing cycle with it that makes sure that all the rubber will capture all of the uh, catalyst that's in there so you can always reuse these so you can feel free to change that or modify however you see fit but this is what works for me so with that I also know that I need to measure out certain amounts for this uh, these cups here go in either 30, 50, 70. So these will go by 10 on the uh, cc or milliliter side or ounces on the other. If you want to have less than this, then you'd have to get smaller, smaller cups for it. But I'm going to pour this right here up 
to the one ounce mark, in this case here. And because this is kind of thick, I like pouring it back and forth like this to make more of a line so then it evenly rises up to that one ounce mark. And I like to go right before that one ounce mark. Whatever it is for you, just make sure that you're consistent with both parts. Because I know that if it's right below one ounce, then it's going to come up to the other part just because of surface tension. Okay. You also notice I did a little twist at the ends there so I can wipe off just the little bit that's on the top there and then this is a clean container for the next one. This one's almost empty here and you can see it still looks brand new. So you can be careful with that. Alright, uh, so we have our part B measured out in there and then we need to pour in the part A next. As soon as this goes, we're going to be on the clock. So I'm going to show you how I like to mix with that and then we're going to put it in the pressure pot and then the first part's going to be ready to go. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here, where I'm going to be pouring in there until it gets just before the next part. So one ounce of part B, I'm going to do one ounce of part A. Okay. And the chemical reaction is already starting to happen in there a little bit, but we have a couple minutes of pot life here, so we're, we're okay on that, which is why I'm not rushing through. Okay, so now uh, watch carefully with this mixing technique. Um, what I like to do is I'm mixing in the middle, and then scrape along the outside, mix in a little bit, scrape along the outside. And I'm only doing like four or five in the middle and then scraping on the outside. Got a little bit of an angle, so it's always bringing that right back down into the center. I'm going to do this for about 45 seconds to a minute, and then this will be ready for pouring. And you can see with the different colors in there, this turning a nice shade of blue, which is good. We don't want to see any white streaks or anything else in there from the part A. We want to make sure that everything is all mixed up. we will see that as we're starting to mix a little bit more, you're going to see little strings and little bits and thin parts right up at the top. That's totally fine. It'll all pull out right at once. out there and the other cool thing about this is it's self degassing to some degree so what ends up happening is you can look in there and it starts to look like lava in the beginning like those are all bubbles that are starting to raise up to the top and so it's going to get rid of a lot of those already and then the pressure pot takes care of a lot of the other ones and the third part so it's kind of like a one two three punch to get rid of bubbles here the other part is to uh, pour from a high, a high height. I'm going to try to pour it this way so it can be shown in there. This is kind of awkward for me to do here. You wouldn't have to do it quite the same way, but do is uh, you would aim the one part and you try not to hit the sculpt itself. Try to just pour off to the side a little bit there, and then let it flow all around from the bottom and rise up. So in that way, it's not going to trap a bunch of bubbles in there, because if you have bubbles, they become lumps. See, with this, this stringy, stringy pour that's going on right now, the idea behind this is every one of those little bubbles is popping in the stream on the way down. So very few bubbles are actually making it in there. So as you can see, there's some bubbles that are still in the cup right now, but you're not seeing those at all in the final mold here. So that's exactly what we want. So we have the master there is almost completely covered up. And there it goes. Once it's completely covered up, you can run around if you want, do something like this. I'll bring it until it's close. Okay, uh, now I'll take a moment here to talk about the cavity. Now with that part, I like to use a toothpick and then I'll get a little bit of it and try to run that right into the center right here like this and bring it in 
And with everyone, there, everyone has different techniques for it. The one that works for me the best is if I'm making sure that I'm getting all four of those sides on the inside. Two, three, four. So you can see that all those are getting in there. All right, and then I'll give it just a little bit more, doing the exact same thing. N not really using a plunger or anything like that. But just enough so then when you're pulling that out, it brings it in there. So that looks good now. So that's all you need for that part there. You do that for however many molds you're making. And then you do the same thing here, where you start pouring from one side. And then let it kind of fall into the bottom all on its own. And it's just going to flow around everything. Now, one other thing that I recommend with this, and I'll go into more detail later about it too, is you fill it up to before the top of those screw holes. So then that way, once everything's all nice and cured, then you'll be able to just slide it right off. That's not going to stick inside of there. And the other nice thing is that it makes a little volcano. And I'll also explain the volcano effect a little bit later as well. But the idea behind that is then uh, all the resin will come up in little pancakes on the top and they flick right off. And it's really, really easy for cleanup. Okay, that looks pretty close. All right, so I've, I've poured these. So it's going to look like that. So you can see the top is still open. Um, I'm going to fill up the other molds on this one here. You can see how those work, but just to save time and then show you the next part. All right, so then through Hollywood magic, this is all full. So now I can go and take these and put them into the pressure pot. So I'm going to swing this right over right here. And just place these inside. Attaching the top. I would highly recommend using a very secure pressure pot because this is a massive amount of pressure that we're putting on here. So for a 12 inch lid, you can look at 40 to 50 PSI, and that's over two tons of pressure that's <laughs> going into that. So there are some horror stories online if you want to look at those for people that have uh, bought some of the, the cheapo versions of these, and they explode, and you see these lids all over the place. But if you have a more uh, robust one like this one here, then the odds of that happening are much less likely, and your safety is not worth saving 50 bucks. All right, so I can take this and I connect it there. Now it's filling up. Okay, so now that's at 50 PSI. We're going to let that cure. I like to double the cure time, so six hours. I usually let these run overnight. And then after that's done, we'll be able to take that apart. You can see what they look like.